Aloha. Welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii series, Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm your host, Tim Mapicella, and today we were going to look at uh, looking with a promising future of hydrogen power transportation. Hawaii is striving to be 100% free of fossil fuels, so it's it's vital part of that is the use of tech to, uh, the technology of hydrogen. And with me today is our guest, Dave Molinaro, who is a project manager that works for HCAT, and he's going to tell us what the latest is with hydrogen transportation and vehicles in Hawaii. Dave, thank you very much for coming to the show. Tim, thanks for having Appreciate me Appreciate it the very show. much. You're quite welcome. Yeah. It's an Maybe. exciting topic to get into. Well, that's, well, yeah, I can't wait. But uh, before I go down my list of uh, questions, how did you get in this business? Well, HCAT's been around mm. since the 19, uh, late 1990s. Um, HCAT really is the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies. My first foray into this was when I was in the Hawaii Air National Guard. and. Uh, the HCAT director, uh, Tom Quinn, back th at that time, approached the Guard on uh, uh, using some initial hydrogen fuel cell technologies. And we had a truck and a what was known as an MB4 Coleman. It was a tow vehicle that was used to tow F-15. So I was very fascinated with hydrogen fuel cell capability and technology. And uh, that's where I got my passion with uh, oh. with HCAT. What, and what, really excited what time about frame was this? This was back in the mid 90s, oh, okay. uh, mid to late 90s. And uh, in fact, let me take that back. It was uh, 2001 when we first started that. Okay. So, but uh, HCAT is a department of, under DBED, under H, the High Tech Development Corporation. And uh, we are federally funded by the Air Force Research Lab. Okay. And it's primarily to do hydrogen fuel cell technology for uh, demonstration purposes for the Air Force. We envision a flight line of the future that is really hydrogen fuel cell um, and for many reasons, not only for uh, energy assurance and energy resiliency, but also um, to help support uh, the reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, use of fossil fuels, so on and so forth. So really it, pleased to be part of the state. They're actually great stewards in this and really appreciate the support that the Air Force Research Lab has given us in this project as well as DBED and HTDC. Yeah, I'm impressed on all the different sources that are, are, are helping out in this, in this area. Um, I'd like to talk about how, how um, the hydrogen market is developed, per se. Um, this show is dedicated to transportation and traffic issues, so I'm going to kind of steer in that direction. But how do you develop a market that's using hydrogen technology? Well, that's a great question. Um, the market in Hawaii is still fledgling, to say the least. Um, we're hoping that what we do with uh, prog programs like HCAT and through AFRIL and uh, through the military to help, I guess, educate and expand on the understanding of hydrogen, hydrogen in particular uh, as an energy source and as a transportation capability. Uh, if you look at states like California, they're heavily, heavily invested in hydrogen fuel cells and hydrogen fuel technology, hydrogen mm -hmm. fuel highways. Um, the state has spent, I think, close to $300 million in the development of that capability where they are state-sponsored uh, hydrogen stations and really pushing that technology forward. Um, Hawaii is not at that level yet, mm -hmm. um, and you could argue both ways that it could be state-funded, or I think the best approach is allowing the private industry, private sector to develop that capability and that economic infrastructure to, to move things forward. But uh, So it's really at the fledgling from a transportation perspective. Uh, Tim, I think you're aware of uh, there's some major manufacturers Predominantly, uh, Toyota has the Mirai. Right. There's several here on island, um, and there's a hydrogen fuel station that I believe is going up at the local distributor uh, mm -hmm. of that vehicle too to help uh, again uh, gain entry into the market with hydrogen fuel cells. Yeah. So. When I think of hydrogen, you know, I think of you know comp compressed natural gas and all the other different technologies that hydrogen is going to compete with as we as we move ahead in the future. Um, the first thing that came to my mind is, well, what's the best application or what market would be best for this and I kept thinking about fleet vehicles yeah but then I thought about well if the state's involved um, there's certainly a lot of state vehicles that could be part of a demonstration project and and then I thought okay well what else could have you know uh, hydrogen technology obviously the the passenger car and, yeah and things like that but is there other other areas that might um, be really receptive to hydrogen technology you Tim you hit on I think a really key point is with the uh, industrial fleets like forklifts uh, short-haul trucking, um, like uh, some of the major components uh, 
delivery packages, so on and so forth, are already looking into that capability and I think have adapted. In fact, there are many companies right now that are using hydrogen fuel cell forklifts and, and tugs uh, throughout their application. You're in uh, Hawaii or? Um, uh, no, not in, not in Hawaii yet, but I also can <clears throat> tell you that there are other companies, uh, there are major uh, tour companies that are looking at hydrogen fuel cell capability for transportation. Uh, oh, okay. And so tourist well too, bus. So. Tourist buses as, yeah. as well, yeah. And uh, I, again, there's a, an application that you can either apply battery or uh, some other type of hybrid. You can certainly apply hydrogen fuel cell technology as well too. So, but again, it's just getting that uh, initiative of hydrogen fuel cells as a or that capability as a, a viable transportation entity. So, uh, to circle back to that answer, mm -hmm. yes, I think. Um, industry, uh, warehousing operations, uh, fleet vehicles, that is definitely on board and that's certainly taking off uh, throughout the mainland, uh, very much so in Europe as well too, and the, cap yeah. the technologies are coming along with that. You know, I know certain states in the mainland are doing, you know, different technologies. I know Washington State was heavily involved with having a lot of the, um, the transit buses with uh, compressed natural gas. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the mix here in Hawaii? Is it more electric vehicles or is it more compressed natural gas or is uh, hydrogen kind of coming to the forefront? Um, or is hydrogen it still kind of climb its way up? Or? It is. It's going to take <clears> some time <throat> for hydrogen. Again, you're, you're talking an infrastructure that's not there yet, right. uh, but will be in the next few years. And so, again, you, if you build it, they will come. I think that's the key that we've got to deal with. So, as far as uh, if there's going to be a predominant uh, capability, whether it's hybrid or electric or fuel cell or some combination there, I think in the next you know, a couple of decades, it's going to be a, a combination of all of the above. You're not going to see a dominant uh, way, shape, or form, and I don't think it's going to fit in all applications either. So, right. um, you know, worldwide, uh, even Hawaii, just look at Hawaii, the number of vehicles on the road right now, there's, there's no way it will be able to convert all the vehicles to hydrogen fuel cell or battery for that capability. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, in the next five to ten years, it's going to take a long time. But the key is starting now, and as we talk. Well, about I mean, if you look at the electrical, um, you know, um, recharge stations, I mean, that would, there are few and far between. Yeah. And, and now that you know, you're going to a lot of malls, and you're starting to see them. Although I am seeing some uh, some editorials in the newspaper saying that a lot of these stations aren't being maintained and they're not operational. So that's that's not always good. So, um, what would it take? What's it take to bring a, a, a hydrogen station, a hydrogen refueling station online as a station? Wow. Um, there's a lot of permitting and licensing and just in general education about hydrogen mm -hmm. fuel cells, hydrogen safety, uh, hydrogen technology. And again, we're working through that. Um, HCAT has taken a big role as, as has the state in helping facilitate the discussion of hydrogen fuel cell implementation. Um, there's a as you bring new technologies on, and in fact, we're competing with petroleum-based petroleum-based industry that's been around for what 125, 150 years, changing that mindset on this is a viable alternative to fossil fuels right. is, is the battle. So, well, um, you said mindset, and and I think when it comes to hydrogen, there's that mindset about combustion <laughs> nature, and I'm not going to say the word. I, I promise I won't say Hindenburg. But, I mean, there is, you know, one comes to thinking about safety issues, but I understand that hydrogen is probably one of the safest, safest technologies out there because uh, it's so light, and it's, it, if there ever was a leak, it, it escapes at a very, very fast rate. So can we talk a little bit about safety? There is a lot of, again, I'm going to qualify this. I'm mm -hmm. not an engineer. I'm not a safety ex expert, but right. um, I do know enough that hydrogen is safe in the, spe in the respect that it uh, is not inherently flammable unless you've got the right carbon and oxygen component there. Um, as you mentioned too, in the design of some of the tanks and the facilities, it is extremely um, safe. Uh, it does dissipate quickly uh, as opposed to... Now I heard, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I heard that if <clears throat> hydrogen does leak, it, 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 it's the, the velocity is 45 miles per hour which is to say in one second you've gone up six, six stories or something that's, like that. That's about that correct. About right? It does. And it, that's it, amazingly it does fast. not settle on the ground right. like a fuel leak or... So it's not a heavy gas. It's, it's extremely not, light. It's very, very <clears throat> uh, uh, safe in the fact that it does dissipate too. Yeah. Um, some of the technology that goes into hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, uh, for example, there are steel, stainless steel wrapped tanks that are wrapped in... Carbon fiber? Carbon fiber. Yeah. Extremely strong. Uh, there are... Um, 
uh, security valves, blast valves, if, we will, if you will, that would dissipate the gas in the event of a fire or major impact. Uh, in fact, I, we've told people, you know, go online, take a look. There's some great videos out there, uh, fuel cell safety work. You know, car that's been hit or damaged in an accident with a hydrogen tank, the flames propagate pretty much in a vertical manner. There's no big spread. Mm -hmm. Compare that to a 20 or 25 gallon fuel tank of, of gasoline or diesel. Or diesel. It's, it's, yeah. it's a huge conflagration compared to what the, the risks are too. So, um, how did <clears throat> how do you folks begin to even address um, you know the public's misperception of, of hydrogen technology? I mean, that has to be an uphill climb all the way. There are some, uh, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, by educating the public and talking to them, talking to the legislators, and we've got some really strong advocates, not only at the national, but the state legislators as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, through uh, proponents like the state energy office, um, done a fantastic job in helping communicate the uh, safety um, issues or the lack of uh, problems with hydrogen. Um, mm -hmm. So it, the potential is there. It's just educating people again. Right. You're bringing new technology on board that people don't understand. And worse yet, in this situation, you've got a misperception because people always think of the Hindberg yeah. or the hydrogen bomb. Yeah. And uh, but it's a it's an education piece that's just going to take time. Well, the fact that you have now Toyota, you have Hyundai, you have. I'm not sure if you have Mercedes Benz in this technology. I think Mercedes room. and BMW are also starting working to go into that realm. Yes. I mean, it would seem <clears throat> that if they're actually adopting this technology and actually starting to manufacture it and actually selling it on a retail value, yep. um, it seems to me that they're probably really good at creating perceptions and, and correcting misperceptions. I don't know to what degree I've ever seen that on TV or, or any ads or anything like that, but is there any, do they get involved with any kind of that uh, marketing? I couldn't specifically yeah. address the marketing of the OEMs, but uh, they have a best in interest in helping the public understand yeah. the safety of hydrogen and and the benefits of it as well, too. Uh, I think most people know that, oh my gosh, the only off gas is oxygen and water, and that's all that is there. And I think that's a, that's a, a huge selling point. Um, I think if they understand the, uh, by generating hydrogen using renewable energy or even through um, other renewable energy means uh, it's a much, much cleaner gas uh, mm -hmm. as far as carbon footprint and greenhouse yeah. gas effects well, it's the, too. It's so. the exhaust. I mean, for me to think it was a natural when it came to um, a lot of transit buses that actually have to go through tunnels and, um, you know, they have to idle inside a tunnel and there's, you know, the carbon monoxide issues and Absolutely. things like that. So, or in the tourist bus, if they're just, you know, into a warehouse and they just keep their, their vehicle running. Um, it just seems to me there's this huge advantage to not having to shut things down, keeping the air conditioner yeah, on exactly. in hot climates. And it just seems like a natural for some of these bigger tourist vehicles or, or you know, bus vehicles. So just kind of, still kind of scratching my head why more transit systems haven't gone down that road. But, uh, Again, I think it's just people just understanding the technologies and where they are. And you hit on a key point. Uh, some of the tourist uh, transportation businesses here are looking at the fact that I mean, I don't have to shut my bus off. I can keep the air conditioning running. Whereas right now, they have to, I think they're handling laws and rules that they have to shut everything down. So it's a definite plus. Yeah. Um, and I, it's really a much better uh, environmental uh, sales pitch, if you will, for the, yeah. for the companies as well, too. It's a, it's a good marketing tool for them to say, we're greenhouse gas free. Yeah. Well, Dave, I'm going to take a break right now. So uh, we'll be back in a minute. This is Tim Apicella, Moving Hawaii Forward, and we'll be back after a few seconds. Hey, Style Energy Man here. Make sure you tune in on my lunch hour every Friday from noon until 12.30 at least. Maybe I'll go a little long if you got good stuff to, to share with you. But we'll talk about energy, all kinds of energy. My favorite is hydrogen, and my favorite, other favorite is transportation and hydrogen. But we'll talk about all kinds of energy. Be with us every Friday at noon, Stan Energy Man. Aloha. Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to figure out how we're going to work towards a clean and renewable energy future. We have exciting conversations with all kinds of stakeholders, everyone who needs to come together to talk about renewable energy, be they engineers, advocates, lawyers, utility executives, musicians or artists to see how we can come together to make a renewable future, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. 
Aloha. Welcome back. This is Moving Hawaii Forward, and I'm here with Dave Molinero, who's with HCAT, and we're talking about hy hydrogen technology and transportation. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate Good. you. Thanks for hanging out with us. Absolutely. <laughs> enjoy this. Appreciate it. Hey, one question I wanted to ask before the break, and I, I didn't um, think get a chance to do that, is, you know, uh, recently there's, um, before the Obama administration actually um, exits, there are some very strong um, air quality um, regulation that has been trying to be pushed through, and, and they're trying to keep it in place uh, before the uh, incoming administration does something about it. And one of that that outreach to industry is the capture of methane gas. And of course, as you can imagine, in the natural gas industry, when you're, when you're drilling for natural gas, you'll, a byproduct is methane gas. And I understand that methane gas is really compatible with hydrogen technologies. And maybe I'd just ask you to just jump into this conversation <laughs> for a quick second to say, how easy is it to try to capture methane gas and, and actually convert it to hydrogen? It's going to be a quick second. Again, not being an engineer, but yeah. methane or many of the gases can be converted into uh, using steam reformation mm -hmm. into hydrogen. And that is a very practical solution in the production of hydrogen for distribution uh, uh, worldwide. Yeah. So. so allegedly, what I hear is that you know a lot of the you know natural gas companies that are drilling, they're not fighting the the regulatory action per se. They're on allegedly they're on board. It just seems there's a natural partnership there that's waiting to happen between the hydrogen um, development technology and you know trying to prevent the methane gas, which. I guess it does have one of the worst uh, carbon it does carbon footprints that when methane escapes in the atmosphere it's if it's not one, number one it's number two as um, far as de detrimental you know with with the oil producers and um, some of the other um, distributors I, I think this is an opportunity uh, for the future yeah. and I think the really smart companies are seeing that um, we've had some really great partnerships with some of the uh, the producers here in Hawaii, they get it, they see it, and they want to move forward with the advancement of uh, anything they can do to reduce the footprint of uh, who, who, fossil fuels. What kind of industries are you looking, are you talking about? Uh, some of the oil and gas producing oh, okay. industries as well yeah. have, have been really supportive. Um, they've been actively involved with what we're doing and uh, are seeking solutions too. And I think, I don't know where you stand or what, regardless of what your stance is on on global warming, mm -hmm. greenhouse gas, is it produced by man, is it accelerated by man, or is it just a natural occurrence? Bottom line is we've got a problem, we need to address it and identify it right. now, and it would be r foolish for us to not move forward to the new technologies and uh, capabilities that we've got right here. And Hawaii is really well positioned for not only the legislative advoca advocacy, but we've got the military here, uh, we've got some great corporations, uh, large and small, that mm -hmm. really are uh, grabbing onto the renewable energy uh, mandate and, and see a way forward. So yeah. it, it's really exciting. I think Hawaii, again, not to be redundant, is really sitting pretty. Well, know, what I heard is, is you know, music to my ears was you have an, in, an industry that has been somewhat resistant to a lot of technologies for, for a very good reason. You know, they have you know, their, their, their properties to protect and their profits to, you know, safeguard. Sure. But what I heard you saying is that they're actually trying to move forward with this technology and they see it as beneficial. So I, I find that um, really very encouraging to hear. Yeah, it is. Rather than it's very a lobbyist to fight this technology is that they, um, they're, they're coming to the table on yeah. it. So, yeah. now again, I think Hawaii that uh, um, many of the industries here that we've dealt with are, are, are collaborating with uh, on all different levels, personal and professional, really understand the need to move forward out, move, move out with the technology and the capabilities too. So. And you mentioned the legislative uh, body is very supportive. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about um, Hawaii Department of Transportation or some of the state agencies. Are you involved with um, any, in a, in, any interaction with those folks? We are. <clears throat> um, we actively engage with the state energy office. They've done a remarkable job in uh, helping identify um, a way forward with renewable energies. Uh, and some of the mandates that are there. Education, uh, not only the general public, but the legislature uh, providing studies and just a lot of advocacy. Um, with the Department of Transportation, um, we're working with them to uh, develop a hydrogen infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, at the airport, oh, okay. uh, or at or near the airport. Um, there is a, hey, a request for here. proposal that's gonna be going out to develop a hydrogen station. And uh, again, at the behest of DOT, um, we want to develop some uh, hydrogen fuel cell uh, 
capability, buses in particular, for the airport. Would that be uh, like the Wiki Wiki or? Not the Wiki Wiki. Right mm -hmm. now, I think the, the uh, premise is to work with the rental shuttles that are right there right now. Oh, okay. So, but that's a great initiative by the DOT. Uh, they're very forward thinking on, on that capability as well. And again, that's going to get hydrogen fuel cell technology and that, that wherewithal, that awareness out into the general public. You get to the airport and you get on a bus that's hydrogen powered. You may get on to Waikiki, you've got a hydrogen bus uh, or some other type of transportation form that's hydrogen capable there. That really does a lot to, to sell So you said the RFP is just now going out? It will be going out, yes. So what kind of time frame do you think there might be something that's exciting a, to report on? I, I wish I could tell you. It's, uh, again, that's all dependent on yeah. the legislature and they have been very, mm -hmm. very supportive. Mm -hmm. Very supportive. So I'm going to ask a tough question. Where are you getting pushback from? Who, um, who, who's not on board? There really isn't anybody that's on board right now. Again, I think the, the general understanding of you know what we have to do to, to move forward. If you look mm -hmm. at Hawaii writ large and the mandate to do renewable energies island wide, that's a huge challenge. Um, you're taking again 150 plus years of centralized electrical distribution using uh, traditional uh, petrochemicals, and now you're saying we're going to do it in renewables. That's a pretty gutsy goal. That's one of those moonshots, and. It's just, it's a difficult uh, perspective to get your hands around. Yeah. And again, as you educate folks and we move forward with certain projects uh, and initiatives, people will understand it. So there's nobody that's saying, not in my backyard. It's yeah. help me so understand So you're shaping values stuff. and attitudes, but thank goodness you're not trying to reshape beliefs. And I think sometimes when it comes to the fossil fuel reliance, yeah. some of that actually gets into the heavy belief system rather than a simple value or an attitude that yeah. you're trying to change. So that's the good news is you're trying to you know, work on, on the easy part of persuasion rather than the real tough part. Yeah, and let me illustrate one example. <clears throat> um, one of the things that we're doing in HCAT, and I'm the project manager for uh, a renewable energy microgrid. It's an Air Force research lab uh, directed project, but we're gonna take a big portion of Hickam Air Force Base or Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam off the grid and use renewable energies as the primary source of um, energy, energy distribution. And we're going to heavy, heavy focus on uh, photovoltaic. We certainly want to use hydrogen in new and unique ways to demonstrate that capacity or that capability. Can you work in tandem, phototech and hydrogen? It can, because you can use the um, curtailed energy from PV to produce mm -hmm. hydrogen, to store hydrogen, to be used to you know, provide electricity. Time or absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So um, with the grid, though, and it's, by the way, it's called the Pacific Energy Assurance and Resil Resiliency Lab, PEARL. Mm -hmm. um, for short. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but we want, we think that that is going to be a great demonstration project, not only for uh, what the Air Force, or what the Air Force is intended for, which is energy assurance and energy resiliency. We think it's really going to be a great template for um, the state to look at those technologies and that concept and apply it to uh, some of the challenges that we've got island wide. and perhaps even throughout the world. There's some really great pro uh, other technologies. We've got a waste to energy, uh, 10 ton per day waste for energy project that is, uh, will be connected to the grid. Uh, very excited about that. Produces uh, an, a great amount of electricity mm -hmm. and uh, also gets rid of uh, potential uh, waste mm -hmm. products. Uh, not going into our streams. Yeah, not going yep. into streams, uh, contaminated waste as well too. So, But we're also looking at unique battery technology, battery storage capabilities, uh, other distribution uh, controlling mechanisms as well too. Hey, um, let me back up. Yeah. Battery with hydrogen. Yes. Oh. As part of, um, Pearl is going to be um, comprised of six grids. So they're all going to be interconnected. And again, in theory, we can island that portion of the Hawaii uh, Air National Guard campus uh, mm -hmm. completely off the grid for a demonstration for uh, really, again, energy assurance and reliability uh, from mission critical infrastructure. So it's really a unique product project yeah. and with applicability for the state of Hawaii. What uh, time horizon do you envision this, uh, this demonstration project? All goes uh, well. We should have our first shovels in the ground uh, by late spring, early summer of this year, oh. for the first of the two grids. So we're really excited about it. We've got great support. Uh, again, kudos to the state, kudos mm -hmm. to the legislature, uh, locally and nationally. We've got great partnership with the uh, Navy Facilities Command, have, has done great work in helping uh, 
move this project along. Uh, I can't say enough about the primary engineers. I'm doing a pitch here for Burns and McDonald. Okay. They're the a &E firm that uh, is a primary contractor for this, and they've just some remarkable uh, engineers and talents to help move this thing forward. So, but all goes well. We'll have it in first shovels in the ground by uh, in the next few months. Great. So, um, anytime you do a demonstration project, there's always a community impact. Yeah. And uh, that's my next question: is how is the community perceiving this 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 demonstration project? Um, are there any concerns? Are they all um, supportive of it? Or what do you think? Again, generally, the we've had great support. People mm -hmm. are really interested in the capability. Um, and with the mandate in 2045, people are really embracing it. I've yet to run into anybody that said, bad idea, not going to work, not in my backyard. What more can you ask for? No, it's, it's fantastic. That's a win-win. And, uh, well, you're in a great business. Yes, we all are. And yeah. it's important, very important. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this, um, where do you see new horizons or new frontiers of this technology other than just um, vehicles and grid, well, the grid's a big one. Yeah. Um, are there any out of the box um, frontiers that um, <coughs> this could be applicable to? I have, absolutely. If you look at hydrogen fuel cells as a motor or an energy source, you can apply that anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, early on, early, early on in the inception of HCAT, I know there were some forays in design and development of hydrogen fuel cells for boats and ferries. Mm -hmm. um, hydrogen fuel cells could certainly be applied in aviation at some point mm -hmm. in time. In fact, I know many manufacturers are looking at that R&D technology right now. So um, where you have an internal combustion engine right now or a huge battery pack, you can stick in a fuel cell and apply the technology just about anywhere. So, and as time moves on, energy and design become more efficient, uh, more compact. It's just only going to get better. I don't want to say there's a Moore's law tied in with energy right. fuel cell development, but who knows? Yeah. I mean, some of the stuff we've seen in the last few years has been really remarkable, and uh, we are out searching through those technologies and those industries that can commit to making that happen. Well, one of the things I like, uh, I like about this show is I bring on guests that can open our horizons and our mind and open us to the possibility of new frontiers. And um, I really appreciate your time coming here today. And uh, Thanks, thank you Tim. for enlightening me about this new technology. Really didn't think of much about it. Uh, here and there I did, but uh, now that I know it's a lot more accessible and it's a lot easier than, than previously thought, uh, I really appreciate that. No, I appreciate it, Tim. Thanks for the opportunity yeah. to come on and talk, and it's always great appearing on Think Tech. So. Yeah. We'd love to have you back. Uh, give us an update on how the demonstration Certainly project's will. going. So, thanks, Dave. Like that. Likewise, much. thank you very much. Yeah. Well, that's all for this week, and uh, this is Tim Apicella, I'm your host, and this is Moving Hawaii Forward, and we'll see you next week.